Hi again then guys and welcome to episode 7 of Dirt Masters, the review series where I'm evaluating the good and not so good points of each real rally car that's featured on Gran Turismo 6. So in this episode, as you can see, we're featuring one of the most iconic rally cars of all time, the Lancia Stratos. It's also the most expensive rally car in the game at 2 million credits. So is it worth that and does it live up to the hype? Well, let's go to the track and find out. Now, the first thing that you notice about the Stratos is that it has a very, very good power to weight ratio. It only weighs in at 880 kilos, but it's also mid-engined and rear wheel drive, which for a rally car could mean that it ends up being temperamental. So how does it fare? Well, performance wise, I'm going to give the acceleration a strong four because it is above your average WRC car. For low speed handling, though, I'm only going to give it a three because unfortunately it is very temperamental very twitchy and although it can give you a fast lap it just feels like you're constantly wrestling with the car at low speeds. For the brakes I'm going to give it a four because they're pretty good. Not perfect but pretty good and overall for city tracks I'm going to unfortunately only give it a three because it's okay but it doesn't feel as great as some of the much cheaper rally cars. So now let's see how it fares on a country track. Now, the mid-engine rear-wheel drive, you would think, would make this car quite well suited to a more high-speed and twisty country road type track. Well, that was what I was expecting anyway, but unfortunately it actually doesn't work out like that. The handling is actually worse on this track than it is on a city track. The car is constantly trying to slide out around every corner, and you can't really get the full power down out of the car. In fact, I had to increase the camber far more on this car than all of the other rally cars just to get it to hold the line in the corners. So unfortunately for high speed handling, I'm only going to give it a four because it's doable, but definitely not the best. And for a country track in general, I'm going to give it a three because again it's just not that great no way near as good as you would hope a car of its price and legend would be so that's it for our country track let's see if it fares any better on a dirt track now i was actually quite surprised at how not bad but how disappointing really the stratos was on road based tracks. I was expecting it to be very nimble thanks to its low weight, extremely short wheelbase and mid-engine rear wheel drive layout, but it wasn't. It was far too twitchy and the weight balance just felt off. So what about on a dirt track? Because obviously the Stratos is a legendary racing car. So how does it fare on the dirt tracks of Gran Turismo 6? Well, to be honest, not that great. Now, most of the rally cars that I've done in this series so far, I've got a clean lap on my first attempt. With this Stratos, I had to try about three or four times just to get a decent clean lap without smacking into one of the railings. Now, the Stratos is pretty well known for being one of the trickier cars on Gran Turismo to really get the best out of, but I was surprised just how disappointing really this car was on a dirt track it can't get the power down due to the rear wheel drive the uphill performance is surprisingly lacking and the weight balance is pretty good 50 percent around most corners but then after you get around 50 percent of the corner done the car kind of oversteers and once it starts going it's very hard to correct and the majority of times the car will oversteer into the barrier which is a real shame because it, it means that you spend more time wrestling with the car when you would rather be focusing on getting a decent lap time. And overall, the lap time that this car achieved on this track actually wasn't that great. It was significantly slower than many of the other cars that were done in this series so far and doubtless cars that are to come in this series. So unfortunately, for dirt tracks, I'm only going to give this car a three because it's really not very good. It's not awful but it is not very good. 
So let's see if hopefully it can redeem itself on a snow based circuit. Now thankfully I am very happy to say that the Stratos does actually redeem itself on snow based circuits. And I'm glad to say that because I don't like to say that any rally car is a bad car because I'm a strong believer that every car is good at something, you just have to find out what it is. And whereas on city tracks the mid-engine rear drive layout combined with short wheelbase makes the car quite slippery and quite challenging to get the best out of, on a snow track that rear wheel drive and excellent counterbalance that you get around corners actually really works to your advantage. Now it's still not perfect, but I am going to give it a 4 out of 5 for snow tracks because it is very good. Far better, to be honest, on this type of track than any of the other track types that we've tested it on. So if you do plan on using the Stratos, I would certainly recommend using it on snow based tracks because the weight balance is very good. The short wheelbase allows you to flow from corner to corner with very minor adjustments to the steering and the performance is powerful enough to keep your flow going but not so much that you're constantly varying your throttle to an extreme degree. So that's it for our track based test of this car. So now let's go back to the garage for a roundup of this car's best and worst point. So overall, I think my verdict for the Stratos would be it is certainly an iconic car and it does have its areas where it is perhaps superior to some of the more modern rally cars, but in general the Stratos is only a car for the more seasoned rally driver. And even then I would say it's only for those of you who are looking for a real challenge, because even the best of drivers will still not achieve as good lap times with this car as you can with cars that are far, far cheaper. Overall, it's, in my opinion, not worth 2 million credits. I don't care how historic the car is, it's not worth that much. I would personally say it's not even worth half that, but I'm sure to some people they would say it is because they just personally like the car. Personally, I'm not a fan of it, but I'm still open-minded if it was genuinely good. But the fact is, it's just not 2 million credits good. Now, it is certainly an iconic car and a great one to have if you're looking to have a rally collection. But if you're looking to spend an amount of money on a rally car purely for its usability and its winning potential, the Stratos just doesn't cut it against the more modern rally cars. You have to work twice as hard as all the other drivers for a lap time that's still inferior. So overall I would say the Stratos' best point is probably its snow ability because the weight balance is pretty good for snow tracks. It's still not amazing but it is pretty good and the drivability on snow tracks is pretty good. For overall drivability I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5 because it is one of the more challenging cars to drive. It's not undrivable though so still a decent 3 out of 5. Its worst point is definitely just how temperamental the steering is. It, it does take a lot of work to get the best out of this car. So overall I would definitely only recommend it for A more experienced drivers and B more experienced drivers who are specifically looking for a challenging drive. So as always I'll put the ratings, times and specs of this car in the video description for you to compare that to the other cars if you so choose. And that's it for this episode, so I'll see you next time, and as always, thanks for watching.